So I think this kind of spurred on from last week's conversation. Um, I can't remember what we spoke about last week, but I think it was in relation to like the training, um, training systems. And wanted to talk more specifically about training models in terms of what's actually out there. Um, what are the pros and cons of each training model and kind of a little bit of a history of, of, of these training models and kind of how they kind of like came into existence and in what businesses or what types of businesses use these types of training models. And I think it's really important to understand from a consumer perspective, these types of training models, it's not um, just a, the background of training facilities and fitness. So the first gym was actually created over 3000 years ago in Persia, which I found really interesting because i know exercise is wasn't really a big phenomenon it was really for like elite athletes and the military personnel when we go back a couple hundred years but back back then it actually encouraged physical fitness that was the whole point was to have all these kind of like heavy objects and implements to move move around and it was more of this exploration and really kind of yeah, kind of discover, you know, how to move things really well and progressively overload um, over time. You know, if you did something lighter, you do something a little bit heavier, so on and so forth. And that's kind of like the first taste of, you know, training facilities and fitness kind of came into its own. Uh, the back, uh, the group fitness, group fitness became really mainstream in the 60s. So it was the aerobics phenomenon. So uh, you're talking about leotards, leg warmers, bright colors, big hair, just, it was like a real group atmosphere. Um, and it incorporated all elements of fitness. So it wasn't just the cardio, it would include some sort of um, mobility or stretching, uh, some sort of strength work. It was just kind of like an all in one kind of thing. We just kind of got little elements of everything. Uh, but today's classes are actually heavily, special, can be heavily specialized based on ability, outcome, special equipment and duration. Um, and I, put CrossFit in there as well because I think CrossFit kind of fits in that group fitness um, arena where certain gyms or certain boxes would actually cater to 10 or more participants and that's what really group fitness is, is 10 and more participants where they're kind of running through a, a structured set program that's been formulated right from the instructor and they kind of just follow along with what's happening and then kind of come from that that you know, group fitness wasn't really for a lot of people, but then also training alone wasn't really a lot for a lot of people as well. I'd probably say the early 2000s, um, early to mid 2000s, we started to see the emergence of small group training, which is for these small classes where you had a bit more interaction with people, um, oh, especially who participants within the class. Everyone was kind of running their own structured pro, uh, a structured program set out by the instructor. And usually it's done by someone with like a cert three or four or someone who's working the floor and it's all pre-prescribed in terms of the, the training program itself. Um, oops, that's a typo. So forget the 60s. Um, then semi-private. Um, semi-private's been popularized by the likes of Mike Boyle, Mike Robertson, Bill Hartman, and Eric Pressy. So these are all kind of like the pioneers of... Um, privatized strength and conditioning um, over in the US. And their, their business model or their training model is one coach, two to four members. So this number allowed individualization, but you still get um, quite a few people coming in through the doors. Um, and we focus on developing all elements of fitness. And like I said before, individualized programs. Uh, Semi-private training. so. Obviously, this is our training model. We, we, we love it. I think, it's, I think it's the best training model in the world. I'm going to be really biased about it. I think it ticks so many boxes as well. So it's, a, one, first of all, it's more affordable than personal training. It's probably a little bit more expensive than, um, little bit, than um, small group. But it kind of fits in that kind of that pocket. So you've got personal training, most expensive, semi-private, then you got um, small group, but then uh, group classes. So it kind of sits on a tiered system. You still get enough attention, attention and feedback from the coach. I think this is really important, especially for those who are looking for the longevity side, not just like, you know, getting your heart rate jacked and feeling sore. Like people who, who are literally training there to get results, 
you can really provide some good feedback and an opportunity for that person to actually grow within the facility um, and a system in not just the training side, but how do, they, how do they recover? How do they eat? It's very easy to have those conversations, very organic in that environment. Uh, small, small, participant, small participant numbers per session or per class, uh, which equals community. So it actually, for a lot of people, it's actually a lot easier to talk to others that they see quite often, but B, that aren't in massive groups as well. So then the, the communication between those people is more likely to be higher, but, uh, which therefore is going to create more buy-in. They're going to feel like it's a place where they belong, that they enjoy having great conversations. It's just a place that they just really want to be. Uh, we assess the track. So semi-privates, you know, there's always an ass we always assess um, the, the progress or assess the starting point. Um, but then we also track their progress that they're, actually, they're making over time. So the training programs, the nutrition side, uh, testing days or when we go through an, another assessment to, to see how much progress they made. Uh, we also look at the structured, uh, structured variation program. So when you do like a, a group class or small group, they might change up every single time, but there's no real progression or there's no system in terms of how we progress these individuals. So sometimes you might do a certain style of squat and next time around you might do a completely different style of squat and might not, you not know, have enough time to really practice the regression or the basic goblet squat first for enough training sessions in order to progress to the next step, which might be you know two or three steps um, along the continuum. So it's always catered to the individual and that's the structured variation in the program. And it's systemized, you know, we do one block at a time for every four weeks.